It's your girl, Isabel Brown. I don't know if you guys have paid a lot of attention over the last several months, really, I guess, last year and a half or so, to the trad girl movement on social media. You may have heard the term trad wife. It's been hallmarked by a ton of really key giveaways like making sourdough bread or not working and being a stay-at-home mom or wearing lots of dresses and most of the time is really really good i think the ideas of traditional femininity and the traditional values of womanhood that have existed throughout all of humanity and i would believe were instituted by god are beautiful and we should be leaning into those but sometimes have gone in a really weird, dark, like cancel culture almost direction. But there's a new piece written by my friend Alina for our friends over at the Conservateur and op-ed that is going viral this week on social media, erupting the right on the internet in debate if the trad girl era, the trad wife era is dead and I'm dying to know your guys's thoughts. But before we read this together, I wanted to show you a few videos just encompassing what I was talking to you about, about the trad girl, trad wife movement encompassing social media content largely on TikTok. So check this out. How to become a traditional wife. Number one, embracing ultra traditional gender roles into your marriage. The man, he is the provider, the main breadwinner. He goes out of the house and works. The woman, the wife, she is the homemaker. She takes care of the home. She takes care of herself and she does the cooking and the cleaning. Which let me just say, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that picture. That's a beautiful picture. That's traditionally how the family structure has always been done. But do I think that you are like a fake woman or buying into all of the lies of modern feminism if you are working outside the home? No, I was raised by a mom who worked outside the home. And for a couple of years there, my dad was a stay-at-home dad and we called him the Manny and he drove us to ballet practice and learned how to do our ballet buns and was room parent all the time and volunteered for all kinds of stuff in our classrooms and it was awesome. I loved that time with my dad and I admired my mom for following her career aspirations, not at the expense of being a mom or the expense of being there for me and my sisters, but to also follow her own dreams. And that didn't make her this raging hyper feminist or a bad mother, but I don't think it's mutually exclusive. Like you can absolutely be a traditional conservative woman and stay at home with your children and not work and be a homemaker full time. That's beautiful. That's an amazing choice for you to make, but it doesn't make you not conservative or hyper feminist for you to also make the choice to go work outside the home. She takes care of herself and she does the cooking and the cleaning. Number two, and I cannot stress this enough, you have to marry the right man. If you marry a guy who in your dating life, he showed abusive and control tendencies, this is a disaster waiting to happen because when you become financially dependent on this man, he will abuse all of that. So well, I actually totally agree with that. Whether you're financially dependent on him or not, who you marry will be the most important choice you ever make. I probably got in the kitchen at like three years old with my mom and she taught me how to cook how to bake. She taught me how to clean, although I could definitely progress on that. Well, that one is interesting to me. Do I think you're not a woman if you're not the best cook in the world? No. And so that's where I think some of this gets a little bizarre. Like some families, the dad loves to cook and is an amazing cook. And some families, the mom literally can't cook a pot of boiled water, like nothing, like nothing makes sense for her in the kitchen. I have fallen in love with cooking as an adult, but I wasn't raised to learn how to cook for my family. My dad did most of the cooking when he was a stay at home dad there for a while and still does because my dad loves cooking and my mom does not. But make sure you are keeping up with your beauty and yourself. You are fit, you are healthy because you and your husband will benefit from this. I actually totally agree with that as well. Like take care of yourself. That's also just a rule for everyone. If you are an adult, you should be taking care of yourself. You should be exercising. You should be eating real food. You should be looking presentable every single day. Don't forget to shower for two weeks and then be surprised when nobody wants to hang out with you. I'm not on pause from a career. This is my career. I'm not wasting my college education, wasting my talent or wasting my time. I don't long for a dream job or dream about the day I can go back to work. This is my dream job. This is the greatest work I will ever do. Live and cry. Oh, I love that. See, stuff like that, I absolutely love. There's something so 
beautiful and alluring about this role of being a wife and a mom and creating this nurturing environment for everyone else. I think that's why we inherently crave that. Even when society tells women to run away from motherhood, to run away from marriage, to run away from long-term emotional attachment, we find alternatives to replace that in any way, shape, or form, whether that's becoming a plant mom, which is actually a very, very real thing in society, or adopting 20 cats, or putting your dog in a stroller. Like, people really do find ways to replace that connection that I think is so inherently baked into who we are and what we long for and what's going to make us happy. But then things get a little interesting to me where the trad movement can just kind of loses me a little bit here. Sis, we due to men now we're incompetent. I'm not saying all men, I'm saying incompetent men. But and if, I think so a lot of women, women can run things better. If, if women were more competent, why didn't they do it? If women, if women were better at it, why aren't they in those positions? There's nothing stopping them. See, I don't even disagree with that. If women want to be a garbage worker or if women want to work on an oil rig or if women want to X, Y, Z, then apparently, according to feminism, we should just do it. But we're not. And maybe there's a reason for that. This speaks into the men and women are different thing. But watch where it evolves from here. There is a lot of things stopping them. The whole thing is that society is stopping them. No, society no, also doesn't not. want women. That's, that's, even that, everyone here can... saying women can't run things. That's not people that are going to vote for women to be president. Imagine women, how many women, 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 okay, again, again, that's not true because more women vote than men. There, women make up the majority majority of votes. There are more women on the planet than men. In the so, UK, are you saying? Every, on the planet. Everywhere. No, but I'm in saying the, in, in the, the UK, UK and the US, correct, yes. So, so this like, oh, we can't run because people won't vote for us, but there's more women voting. But so I'd like, I'd like, we, so we even we even recognize ourselves that women don't make the best leaders. So remember, but why why didn't women have the right to vote? Women, so historically, men had to go to war and fight. Uh -huh. That is why women couldn't vote was because we, if you had the choice today in 2022 and we were in war and you had to go fight on the front lines, mm. would you pick it? I personally, and this is where people take me out of context mm. and say, I don't think women should vote. Personally, if I in 2022 had the choice where I had to go fight in the front lines, just like the men in a war, or I could give up my right to vote, I would give up my right to vote. Mm. And that, that, see, that's where I just get a little lost, to be honest with you. There's a lot of people, a growing contingent of people saying that women shouldn't have the right to vote or women saying I would gladly give up my right to vote. There's even a lot of people, mostly men, saying that women should not have the right to work outside the home, that women should not have the right to own property, that women should not have the right to have our own bank accounts and run our own financial decisions. Basically, like going back to a time before civil rights and before equal rights under law, that loses me a little bit in the more fringe extreme version of the trad wife movement. I don't even necessarily disagree with what Pearl is saying there in terms of my personal decision. I would give up my right to vote from her perspective. I wouldn't. I would go fight, frankly, if like Elle was going to shit and the world was just ending and we needed as many hands as possible to preserve goodness and morality and truth in society. I personally would go fight and I know a whole lot of women who would do the exact same thing. But it's just interesting because I don't know how much I agree with that. So when all of these competing narratives are happening on social media about what it means to be a traditional girl, what it means to be a traditional wife, a trad wife, and what it means to be a traditional conservative, a trad con, I found this article from Alina on the Conservators website this month to be absolutely fascinating. And we're going to read it all together. I'm going to get your thoughts, chat, and then we're going to bring Alina into the stream and have a little bit more explanation for why she wrote what she did, because I think this really encompasses my multiple things can be true at the same time sentiment, where sometimes it's beautiful, sometimes it's wonderful, and sometimes it just doesn't even encompass what being conservative is actually all about. So let's check this out together. Instagram, I'm sorry if you get chopped off a little bit on the sides, but you'll be able to listen to us read it anyway. This is from The Conservator on January 7th, and I put the link to this article in the description of the video for wherever you guys are watching if you want to go back and reread it. It's entitled, Has the Trad Bubble Popped? With this image of like the most perfect trad wife explanation, you're on your sheep farm wearing a long, gauzy, white dress, a loose white dress, and you've got your babies in tow. Listen to what Alina has to write about this. If it's been a while since you've seen the little house on the prairie clad women telling you to bake sourdough, you're not alone. 
The trad wife trend has been in vogue for several years now. Perhaps it emerged in the post-COVID return of many women to the domestic sphere. People generally spent a lot more time getting creative in their kitchens during quarantine. In any case, the popularity of online trad influencers seem to be fading almost as quickly as it began. Though the trad lifestyle comes in many shapes and sizes, it usually involves women dressed vaguely Amish, <laughs> documenting their lives on rural homesteads, which let me just say up front, this sentiment sounds beautiful. It sounds wonderful to me. Like, I would love that. That would be great. Sign me up for the homestead with the cool dress like Little House on the Prairie. But I don't think that you're not a traditional conservative woman if you want something different than that. Trad content can be instructive. For the increasing number of women who want to be homemakers but don't know where to start, influencers offer the recipes, tips, and encouragement that the girl boss generation was too busy to learn and pass on. But self-proclaimed trad wives are still influencers, a fact they'd love for you to forget. While there's nothing wrong with most of the things valued by the trad movement, the trend unhelpfully takes conservative values such as family, modesty, and traditional gender roles and turns them into cosplay escapism. So what the author is arguing here is this almost feels, in her opinion, like a caricature or a cosplay dress up of traditional womanhood and traditional gender roles. They insist on rejecting even the most basic compromise with the 21st century. Many mim mimic the 1950s, a decade they find particularly virtuous, and the pinup style of Estee Williams. To live anywhere but in a bygone era is to admit that there is something in the modern world worth conserving, requiring of a woman a life more nuanced and engaged than playing a character on Instagram. Ultimately, following the online trads to their logical conclusion means retreat and withdrawal from the world. But homemaking doesn't have to be made out of perfectly polished homes and organic produce out of the victory garden. To make those prerequisites is to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It makes the bar for women who want to live out conservative values a lot higher than it needs to be, says this author. It's possible to still live in the world, even if we aren't living of the world. And that line, oh, just mic drop. That's, I mean, that's fascinating. The bottom line, the trad movement isn't conservative because it sees nothing left to conserve. That is a hot freaking take. That is a hot take. I'm going to read that sentence again. And this is what I want your guys' thoughts on in the chat. Alina, the author of this piece, says the bottom line, the trad movement is not conservative. There's nothing conservative about the trad movement because it sees nothing left to conserve. It's empty and escapist because in her words, it inherently involves running away from the world, retreating from the world, not engaging in the culture war to bring something forward. I, I just think that's so powerful like what an interesting way of looking at this there's power and there's beauty and there's respect in being a trad girl being a trad wife embracing traditional values but not having to overperform or or overcompensate for it publicly on social media to like prove to the world to perform for the world as a trad wife trad girl trad con the people that I can think of in my life that I personally know who are the most traditionally conservative, respected, well-rooted and happy and fulfilled people don't put on a show about it. There is this sense of balance that I think is so missing from this conversation that I, for one, am really glad that Alina brought to the forefront with this really viral op-ed. Allie Beth Stuckey also covered this topic this week, and she talks uh, in much greater detail. I highly recommend you listen to her podcast about it, about how the way trad wives and trad girls are being portrayed on social media might not necessarily even fit the biblical definition of what womanhood or being a wife is supposed to look like the God's biblical design for what our lives are supposed to look like. And there's a lot more to unpack there, but 
that's that. I mean, it's an interesting, controversial topic of our time. I think, for one, there's such beauty and grace and reverence in embracing traditional values and embracing our femininity and embracing marriage and motherhood and going to live off the grid. But if that's not your exact story in life, if you want to still work while you have a family, if you're unable to have a family, if you live in a big city or even in suburbia and not on a homestead, if you prefer wearing pants to long skirts or dresses, there's nothing about that that still doesn't scream traditionally conservative or traditionally a woman. We just have to redefine what that looks like with a sense of balance moving forward.